Hello, welcome to Healthy Dynamic Life. My name is Lexi Tavares and I'll be your teacher today for this raw yoga workshop, going upside down to lose weight and improve wellness. Yoga inversion. <laughs> Yoga inversion is a category of yoga poses that place your head below your heart and hips, therefore inverting your body from its normal upright position. Any pose in which your heart is higher from the ground than your head is considered an inversion asana. So this includes common yoga poses such as Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog, Viparita Karani, legs up the wall, and headstand, Shirshasana. Yoga inversion is believed to release tension, increase circulation, increase energy levels, and strengthen your muscles. It's also thought to promote emotional growth, calm the mind and spirit, send energy toward the heart, and help you become more connected with the earth. Inversion asanas can range from easily accessible to difficult and challenging and invigorating and should be selected based on your experience, your strength, health conditions, and any injury history. Even among healthy individuals, it's important to learn how to safely perform each inversion asana to prevent injury and to reap the greatest benefits. The really cool thing about inversions is that we can get the benefit of inversions from any inversion asana. So whether you practice legs up the wall or handstand, you're going to get the benefits of being upside down. And there are many benefits to practicing inversions. For one, it improves circulation. Inversions encourage uh, the return of blood, which means that it encourages the blood to travel from the extremities and back to the heart. Normally, the vein the venous blood return helps ease muscle tension and it helps the heart work to deliver oxygenated blood to the brain and the whole body. So getting upside down is a gentle way to achieve this while at the same time giving the heart a rest. Inversions help build strength too. Building up to a full expression of an inversion with your feet in the air can take time, but even the simpler inversions with just your head below your heart, such as dolphin or downward facing dog, helps you build strength in your arms, your shoulders, and your whole core. Inversions also improve focus. As we work through the challenges that come with practicing inversions, such as fear of falling and muscle tension from building strength, we are often forced to tune inwards and become very focused on the pose. And once you feel comfortable in inversions, whether it's a uh, you know, downward facing dog to a full handstand, you'll begin to find and feel a stronger sense of calm come over you in the pose as the central nervous system balances out the fight or flight response, reducing cortisol levels that can cause stress and anxiety and finding that peacefulness, that calmness in the pose. Inversions also boost the immune system, the entire lymphatic system plays a huge part in our physical health, in releasing excess weight, in detoxing, and the network of tissues and organs that help rid the body of toxins and waste. So one of the benefits of yoga inversions is that when we turn upside down, we stimulate the lymphatic system, increasing the flow of white blood cells and lymph through the whole body, so we're strengthening our immune system improving our health. Inversions are also energizing. When you go upside down, you're not only increasing your blood flow to your heart, but also to your brain. So in turn, you will come to find that inversions leave you feeling energized, focused, clear-headed, because the freshly oxygenated blood improves your brain function, releases neurotransmitters and helps balance hormones as well. 
Inversions also relax the nervous system. With strong inversions such as dolphin pose and headstand, they can be really energizing and invigorating, but other inversions like shoulder stand or plow, you know, at the end of your practice can have a really calming effect on your body and your mind as they activate that parasympathetic nervous system, right? The opposite of fight or flight. Inversions also, believe it or not, aid in digestion. Inverting and getting upside down allows gravity to work for your digestive system. And while this might seem a little counterintuitive, it's actually true. Getting upside down encourages movement from your small intestine and through to the ascending colon, while the core work of inversions encourages movement with pressure on the walls of the digestive tract, which is great for those of us who want to release excess unwanted weight or just improve our digestive health and function. Inversions can also boost confidence and patience. Practicing inversions are, you know, sometimes Sometimes they're considered pretty advanced, challenging poses, but the truth is that anyone can practice and experience the benefits of going upside down. And, you know, not all inversions require <laughs> the certain amount of strength and focus that others do, but, but some are really invigorating and challenging. And so this confidence, this patience and, and strength that you slowly build by practicing the the more accessible inversions like dolphin or, um, you know, as we work and, and work toward the more challenging poses, that translates into other aspects of our life, right? Our patience as we work toward uh, the next step. Inversions, therefore, can also change your perspective, how you look, look at things, because literally you're flipping things upside down. <laughs> you can see things from a completely different perspective. And, you know, one of these benefits is, is shifting your energy with an inversion can help you feel newly energized, newly inspired, or just look at a situation in a new way. So maybe if you're stuck on a problem off the mat, just go upside down and see if a solution comes to you. Lastly, but I think most importantly, inversions are super fun. Going upside down encourages a sense of playfulness in your practice. And you can use, you know, props and get creative and to get comfy, um, you know, lifting off and practicing going upside down is a fun challenge. And I want you to embrace that goofiness, that playfulness, having fun in today's workshop. So without further ado, take out your yoga mat, get any props that you think you might want available. I always have a bolster, blanket, pillows, blocks, the three minute eggs and a strap on hand just in case if I want it. And I'll see you on the mat. All right, welcome. Here we go. I'm Lexi, and this is Whoop Whoop, Whoop Whoop, also known as Super Duper Whoop Whoop on Instagram, and a good friend of mine. She's going to be demonstrating and taking this workshop alongside with you. So before we get into the asanas or postures for this fun inversions upside down workshop, we're going to start with breathing. Breathing is super duper. Woo -woo. important for being alive and for practicing asanas. So today we're going to do ujjayi breathing. Ujjayi means victorious. So I invite you to try on your victorious breathwork suit today and we'll walk you through it right now. So first find a comfortable seated position. You can find yourself in Sukhasana. Um, just like Whoop Whoop is sitting, we have her on a block to help promote a nice straight spine. You can sit in Virasana Hero's Pose with your hips on your heels or your heels out to the side. And start to notice your seat grounding into the floor or connecting with your feet. Notice how your body is feeling in this moment. Whatever was happening before, just let it go. Come into your body right here, right now. You could choose to focus your gaze in front of you, find a focal point or a drishti, 
or you could choose to let your eyelids relax and close your eyes. And once you shake out all the wiggle jiggles, come to a still position with the spine nice and straight. Beautiful, she took a nice deep breath. And notice the quality of your breath. Without any judgment, just notice how it is right here, right now. Where do you most sense the breath? Is it in the nose, the back of the throat, the shoulders or the chest or the belly, expanding, rising, falling? Amazing. Bringing your awareness back to the breath. If thoughts start to carry your attention away, it's okay. Just notice that and come back to where you most sense the breath and focus on that place. Let's take two or three more rounds of breath in and out. And if you haven't already, we're going to start cultivating ujjayi breath. So this breath practice is going to be breathing in and out of the nose. What we're gonna do is slightly constrict the back of the throat. It's almost like you're breathing in through a straw, but with the nose. The result is this quality of sound akin to the ocean waves or that Darth Vader famous sound. Good, while relaxing all the muscles of the face and the body. Boop is doing an amazing job. I hope you're enjoying this at home too. And you might feel that vibration with the breath. Another benefit of this breath is that awareness, that grounding. It brings our focus back to the sensation of the breath. And if you don't feel the vibration or you don't hear the sound, that's okay too. It takes practice, just like anything. So just keep trying, keep breathing. That's the most important part of breath work practice is to keep breathing. We'll take one more round of breath together. What a beautiful exhale. And when you feel complete, start to bring your awareness back to the space. Open your eyes if they were closed. And let's check in with ourselves. How are we feeling now versus before we started this workshop? Boop, boop, how are you feeling? Very relaxed. <laughs> Anything else? Grounded, chill, a little bit, not like lightheaded, but like a little bit. Lighter? Yeah. It's like, whee. <laughs> I think we'll be able to cultivate more of those feelings as we go upside down. But take a second, journal, or pause this video and reflect on how you're feeling by practicing ujjayi breath. And let us know in the comments below if you liked it, if you didn't like it, and how you feel. Now let's move into our yoga asana practice, our inversions, carrying with us the ujjayi breath work. All right, so the first yoga asana we're gonna practice is Viparita Karani, legs up the wall. So this posture is amazing. This inversion is accessible to almost everyone. It's uh, easy to come into and it feels so, so good. So let's get right into it. Okay, Whoop Whoop is going to come into a reclined position and bring her sits bones as close to the wall or the couch we have today as possible. She's scooting, scooting, and then bringing her legs straight up. She's gonna straighten her legs and flex her toes, pointing toward her head, beautiful, and her arms are coming by her sides. 
and she's starting to breathe. Ujjayi breathing in and out. With an inversion like this, I like to stay here for at least 10 to 15 breaths to really get the benefits of the inversion. Now, there are some other options to use props here. Um, if you'd like, you can bring the hips higher than the heart. I really, really love how that feels in my body. I love a block or a three minute egg under the hips on the side like this. But when Woo Poop and I were practicing, we decided that she loves a blanket the most. So we're gonna just slide a blanket under her hips. There you go, how's that? Make a little adjustment there. <laughs> Good, and then go ahead, get yourself comfortable, close your eyes. And we're gonna stay here for 10 breaths together. Ujjayi breathing, that nice ocean sound. You can also focus on a mantra. I know I am breathing in. Saying that quietly to yourself. And exhaling, I know I am breathing out. Good. She has created nice space here in the neck and shoulders. Arms are relaxed, palms facing up. Beautiful ujjayi breath. And there's this delicate balance of engaging the leg muscles, but also letting them relax, relaxing into the posture. I think it's doing an excellent job. If you wanted to here, you could also play with the placement of your hands. You could bring them into Yogi Mudra, taking the thumbs and the four fingers together and placing it below the belly button. Making a little triangle, and then the fingers would all come together here. You could also take one hand to your heart and one hand to your belly. You put a block under your elbow if your elbow doesn't quite reach the floor. Really staying present with the breath, enjoying this posture. You have nowhere to go, nothing to do. Just keep breathing. So good to encourage blood flow, circulation, being upside down is so yummy. And we'll take one more round of breath together here. And when you feel complete, there are several ways to come out of this posture. I'm just gonna take the block from your elbow. You can scooch your bum uh, backwards and then bring your legs down, or you can let your legs fall down to the side coming into the <laughs> side leg child's pose. Sound effects are welcome and encouraged. And then <laughs> when you're ready, you can take a deep breath and push yourself up to seated. So whoop whoop, how are you feeling? Nice. Nice, yeah. what did you notice in your body? Um, yeah, I felt relaxed. I felt my legs kind of like tingly, but in a good way. And again, yeah, I just felt very, I think the breathing felt very relaxed. Breathing is so important in inversions mm -hmm. and ujjayi breathing especially I find really powerful. And that's another thing to note, you might feel tingles. Mm -hmm. we're, we're always upright. I mean, most often when we come into an inversion, it's a different experience. And if it's uncomfortable at any time, simply come out of the posture if that's what your body is, is informing you to do. Um, but it's also an opportunity to be open to new experiences and sensations 
which can help us off the mat as well. So legs up the wall, also known as waterfall. And I hope you enjoyed that posture. Let us know how you feel in the comments below and, and what you think. <sighs> All right, we're going to do downward facing dog. I think a crowd favorite inversion. You might find this in most yoga classes that you attend and it's really yummy, really juicy, and I hope you like it. So to get into downward facing dog, we're gonna have whoop whoop start in child's pose. So sitting her hips on her heels and extending her arms out in front of her. Beautiful. So this is how you know about where your hands and your feet should be placed. So as she starts to come up onto her hands and tucks her toes under, she's gonna take a deep breath in and her exhale, send her hips toward the sky as she presses her heels towards the earth. Good, her fingers are spread wide, palms are pressing into the ground. Good, create space in the neck and shoulders, amazing adjustment. Head is towards the ground, lengthening the spine. Good, and it's okay if your heels don't touch the floor, they're just moving toward the floor. And if you have someone to help assist you, they can come feet by the hands and press the low back forward and up. How does that feel? Good. Keep breathing. So downward facing dog is an active pose. We're really engaged here. Beautiful. Amazing. Pressing really into the floor, lengthening. Good. And if you bring your heels up slightly, I wonder if we can lengthen your spine, pressing your hips up, up, up. Yeah, do you feel difference? Mm -hmm. Good. And keep breathing, ujjayi breath. And now as you exhale, let your heels come towards the floor. And when you're ready, you can come back down, bringing the knees towards the floor, coming back into child's pose or onto your seat. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Good. Breathing here in your child's pose or in your seat. And when you're ready, come back. How do you feel? Mm, nice. E e <laughs> what was your experience in downward facing dog? Um, Made me sleepy. <laughs> okay. You felt sleepy, like restful, relaxed? Yeah, I felt relaxing. Even though I was completely engaged the whole time, I still felt like I was focused on the breath and very present. And yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It's activated so, but chill at the same time. Activated and chill. Yeah. And that's really cool because we were talking about how inversions can be relaxing and invigorating mm -hmm. at the same time. It sounds kind of strange, but it just happened to Woo Boop, so just it can happens. happen to you too. <laughs> so what was your experience with Downward Facing Dog? And let us know in the comments below. All right, so as I mentioned, the, some of the next inversions we're gonna go into detail in this workshop require a little bit more strength and coordination. So before <laughs> getting to those, we're gonna talk about some preparatory poses that you can practice to build that strength so that we can work towards some of the inversions that we'll talk about. So Whoop Whoop is going to demonstrate. First, we're gonna come into a plank pose. So she's gonna bring her wrists under her shoulders, knees under the hips. We'll start in tabletop. She's ready to go. <laughs> Good, nice straight spine. She's gonna spread her fingers wide and press into the earth as she extends her legs backwards, one at a time, coming into a nice straight line, beautiful. And by pressing into the floor, she's opening up the back of the chest and avoiding collapsing her chest right into the earth. Good, her head is nice and aligned. She's breathing, it's really important to breathe. Heels are pressing back and you can hold this as long as you'd like. So let's take a deep breath in together here. 
One more, you can do it, breathe in. And then you can bring your knees down to the earth. Nice, two at a time. You can come into child's pose if you'd like, or come bring your hips to your heels for a nice opportunity to breathe. It's a very invigorating, strengthening posture. I love planks. I like to create plank challenges for myself. So I'll do like a 30 day plank challenge starting at 30 seconds, working my way up to a couple minutes, if that's something that you'd like to do. Um, so that is plank. Would you like to do it again? Yeah. <laughs> yes, let's do it. Let's keep going. All right, so taking a deep <laughs> breath in and coming into your plank. Another thing you can do to really engage the muscles is take a three minute egg and bring it in between the upper legs. So she's really squeezing, engaging. Her core is engaged, her glutes are engaged. Beautiful, you can lengthen. Looking about a foot in front of your palms, you can even walk your palms back towards your shoulders just a little bit. Amazing adjustment. Looking so strong, keep breathing here. Sometimes we wanna hold our breath to feel strong, but just keep breathing in and out. I'm gonna take the block away, and then whenever you're ready, coming back onto a nice, comfortable seated position. Or child's pose. Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a nice little assist here. Take a deep breath in, and exhale. Mm. Meow. <laughs> Good, and then if you wanna come up to seated, how do you feel? So strong. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Was it easy? Was it difficult? What did you notice? It was easy to go into it, but yeah, the longer I was up there, starting to feel it a little bit. Where did yeah. you feel it? I felt it in my arms and my glutes. My abs felt it everywhere. Beautiful. The whole body. <laughs> it's a full body invigorating posture for sure. And a lot of us um, could really benefit from upper body strengthening, um, specifically for inversions today. So that's why I love plank pose as a preparatory pose. The next one we're going to do is our forearm plank. So it's essentially the same pose, but on our forearm. So our elbows are going to be below the shoulders. You can start by clasping the, the hands together. And then that's kind of going to tell you where your base is, and then you can bring the hands perfect to the floor. Again, spreading the fingers wide, pressing into the earth, and then sending the feet back. Good. Working to create that nice straight line. Beautiful. So the core is engaged. Glutes and legs, heels pressing back. Good. Lengthening the spine. Nice. Breathing here, creating space. And you can stay here as long as you'd like. Just keep breathing. Loop, loop, I'm going to leave it up to you how long you'd like to stay here. And then when you come down, you can just bring one knee at a time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. And then come into um, a, however you'd like to rest for a moment and take a couple breaths. Maybe shake it out. How do you feel with forearm plank? It felt a little easier. A little easier. Yeah. How about you? Do you prefer plank or forearm, forearm plank? And, you know, noticing where our strengths and weaknesses are can really help us uh, formulate our practice. So if I, you know, feeling really confident in the traditional plank and I'm like shaking with forearm plank, I might choose to practice forearm plank a little bit more every day and build up that strength. Um, so awesome. We're going to take forearm plank and take it a step further into what we call our dolphin push-ups. So we're going to come into the same pose. We just did our forearm plank. So she's going to take her elbows below her shoulders. Yep. Coming into her nice wide finger grip, pressing into the palms, taking the feet back into our forearm plank. Good. And then she's going to take a deep breath in and on her exhale, send her hips back toward her heels, coming into dolphin. Beautiful. Inhale, coming back into her forearm plank. Good. And then moving with the breath at her own pace, 
shifting between these two um, expressions of the posture. Good, creating space in the neck and shoulders. You're doing amazing. And I'll let you decide how many you'd like to do today. Maybe doing one more than you think you can. Allowing yourself to build that heat, that tapas, and, and um, you're doing amazing. Yes. Oh, one more. You got this. Keep breathing. That's so important. And then when you're done. One more. One more. <laughs> Good. Think, think. Amazing. And you can come into child's pose or sit down. If you have a friend or someone available with you, they can also provide a nice assist. Do you want to come into dolphin? Good. Using your breath, coming back. I'm just gonna take your hips and just gently lengthen the spine. How does that feel? Lovely. Okay, and stay here. Ooh, the shoulders just relaxed. Good. And when you're ready, you can come out of that. Woo, dolphin push-ups. What was your experience? It was really nice. It felt very flowy. Felt like I could, could keep going, actually, which is great. But my regular push-ups are not so much like that. So <laughs> it felt nice to be like, oh, yeah, I can keep going. Okay. So, yeah. Cool. Felt, felt empowering. Yeah, yeah, that's really awesome to build mastery in a certain skill. And, and by doing that, that's going to help us with some of the inversions we're going to get to as well. So let us know how did you do with dolphin push-ups and of these preparatory poses, where are you doing really well? And what do you want to continue to work on? We have one more. Um, so my teacher has shared with me, and I agree that it's a really great idea to practice our headstands and handstands off the wall because we don't want to rely on the wall. Um, but as a preparatory pose, I'd like to introduce handstand on the wall to build confidence and strength um, working toward handstand off the wall. So what we're going to do is have Whoop Whoop come into a downward facing dog. So you can start in your plank pose and um, start your body with your heels close against the wall or in our case, the couch. Good, and then she's gonna press back into her downward facing dog. And then she's gonna walk her feet up the wall to about a 90 degree angle. And with our couch, we're gonna get a little creative. And then she's gonna walk her hands back so that her uh, wrists and shoulders are aligned with her hips. Beautiful. Keep breathing. She's creating space in her neck and shoulders. Lifting. Beautiful. Pressing the heels into the wall. Pressing her hands into the floor is going to create a nice lift here. How you doing? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Okay, good. Keep breathing here. Good. Bring your hips over your shoulders. Yes. Nice adjustment. And then whenever you're ready, you can walk your feet down the couch or the wall. Ding, ding. Or just step down. <laughs> so what was your experience with handstand with the, with the couch? Whew. I find it harder than doing a handstand in general or against the, like against the wall, even though I know it's not. <laughs> it's harder. It's more control, too, like keeping my hips over my shoulders. But yeah, yeah, and everyone's gonna find different postures easier and more challenging depending on our experiences. Um, I really like this preparatory pose because it kind of helps us find that sweet spot of the stacked hips, shoulders, and wrists. Mm -hmm. You can kind of play with that and even take one foot off the wall at a time. Um, so those are our preparatory poses for our inversions. What were your favorites? What would you like to work on more? And let's get into our inversions. All right. Next, we're going to learn Salamba Sarvangasana, which means all limbs pose, but is commonly referred to as shoulder stand. So this pose is such a yummy inversion because of how we're positioned. It really helps promote 
the downward blood flow from the legs and it's just so much fun. Let's find out how it feels for you. So to start, <laughs> we're gonna have Boop Boop lie on her back. Lie on your back as well. And there's a little bit of momentum required to get into this pose. So you can, yep, bring your feet to the mat and bring the knees toward the chest as you bring energy up to come onto your shoulders. She's gonna take her hands to her low back and reach her legs toward the sky. Good. Let's see if you can bring your elbows closer to the center of your back. Nice adjustment. This really helps open the chest too. And ideally what we're working towards is a nice straight line. So bringing the hips toward the chest, beautiful. And if you have a friend to help you lift the legs toward the sky, how does that feel? Great. Good. And you want to think about creating space in the neck as well. Amazing adjustment, relaxing the shoulders. Please keep breathing here, ujjayi breath, in and out. And you might notice in some yoga classes, people will be moving their legs around and that's all fun and great, but to get the maximum benefit from this posture, you wanna stay as still as possible for half a minute to a minute. So listen to your body, <laughs> do it as long as you can do it. Um, but I invite you to take some time, really focus on your breathing here in this posture now. Good, breathing in and out. Staying as still as you possibly can. Beautiful, she's creating space in her neck, which is allowing her to take full deep breaths. <sighs> Amazing, you're doing great. Doing the best that you can. You're exactly where you need to be moving towards where you want to go, just focusing on the breath. Whenever you feel complete and ready, you can remove your hands from your low back and slowly roll down one vertebra at a time for a really yummy back massage. Bing! Oh yeah, how do you feel? I feel really good. Yeah, I love it. You love it? Yeah, I really like shoulders <laughs> things. What do you love about it? Um, it's sort of playful, which I'm a playful kind of whoop whoop. So I like that. It feels nice. It feels very sturdy. Like just the way it feels like your arms are little tripods on a bicycle and they're just sort of heavy there. So it feels very steady and sturdy and yeah, I like it. I like yeah. it too. Yeah, it is a, a supported posture. Right, and you could also have um, blocks under your sacrum to kind of do like a legs up the wall, off the wall, <laughs> um, as a waterfall variation. Um, so just you know, noticing where you're at in your body and and working with an inversion that works for you, knowing that you're perfect exactly where you are, and that there are other variations to work towards. So from here, Salamba Sarvangasana, we have some other postures we can play with, such as Palasana or Plow. So I'm gonna ask Boop Boop to scoot her body toward the couch so we have room. And we have some variations to play with as well here with some props. So she's gonna come up into shoulder stand just like we did. Good, bringing the hands low back, pressing the legs up. Good, working toward a nice straight line, shoulders, hips, and heels eventually, right? And then what's gonna happen is keeping the upper body where it is, her legs hinging at the hips are gonna come toward the earth. You could have a block here to catch your toes. You wanna tuck your toes. Yep, and as you can see, she removed her hands from her low back and then extended them out to her side, that's another beautiful option. How does the bolster feel? Feels nice. Okay, good. Creating space in the neck for breathing. Oh yeah. Keep breathing here. 
in and out. Another option would be to put blocks or books, pillows, blankets, whatever you have. And you can see she's playing with coming up onto her toes and untucking her toes. Um, I like to tuck my toes under and keep my feet flexed. Really get a nice full back stretch. Yeah, straightening the legs, beautiful. Keep breathing, ujjayi breath, amazing. When you feel complete, take your time here, get the full benefit out of this posture. Then you can come back up to shoulder stand and come out, or you can from here, just nicely roll out one vertebra at a time. Whee! That's a super playful one too. How was halasana or plow pose for you? It felt nice. <laughs> it was a good stretch. I felt like my hammies were feeling feeling nice and stretched and yeah, I like it. Do you have a preference of shoulder stand or plow? Shoulder stand. Yeah. yeah. Plow can be really intense, especially if it's something new for you. So, you know, just play with it and gradually um, enjoy the journey working towards that posture. The boob looks so comfortable. I want to give her a nice head massage. Yes, please. <laughs> and that can be a nice um, opportunity in between postures to just yes. give your body some more love. Oh. Oh, next up, we're going to do Karna Padasana earmuff pose. So coming back from <laughs> shoulder stand, we're going to boop boop, bring herself up, beautiful and nice. Bring those elbows close together, good. She's creating lots of space in her neck, getting that adjustment. And then coming into plow, halasana. I'm going to bring the bolster here for you. Good. And then for earmuff pose, she's going to bend the knees. So from halasana, from plow, bringing the knees towards the ears, hence earmuff pose. Do you want the bolster or would you like me to remove it? You can remove it. Okay. Bringing the toes toward the earth. And you can stay here with the hands on the low back. You can clasp the hands and press them into the floor away from you. I'm going to bring some blocks under your feet. How's that? You want to tuck your toes? Is that better? Sure. Okay. Another option here is to take the arms around the knees and give them a hug. Yep, you could do that. There's many uh, variations. Or you can bring them around the outside and clasp them together. Give a gentle squeeze. I really love this to get a nice stretch in the back. Good, and keep breathing here. That's so important in inversions. Amazing. How are you feeling? Good. Good. And stay here as long as you'd like, as long as you can. And then when you feel complete, you can come out the same way you came in. So then you would unclasp your hands, take a deep breath in, support your body, and come out of it. <sighs> Okay, let's have you come up to sit. And what was your favorite expression coming mm. from shoulder stand, halasana, or earmuff pose? I think still shoulder stand. Yeah, mm -hmm. awesome. How about you? What's your favorite expression? Let us know in the comments below. And how are you feeling now versus before we started this workshop? Mm. Strong, focused present. Yeah, happy. and that's and happy. And happy. <laughs> Yay. Right? This is fun. This is playful. It's, mm -hmm. it's super fun to be doing inversions. And I think that's a really good point you brought up being focused because mm -hmm. when we're upside down, when we're inverted, we're getting a lot of blood flow to the brain. Makes so, your hair curly. <laughs> <laughs> that could be another benefit. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but yeah, like in the middle of the day, if you need a pick me up of energy, a focus of concentration, just go upside down and mm -hmm. see what it can do for you. Okay, so we just did all of these amazing inversions. Let's do a counter pose and come mm -hmm. into fish pose. So come to lie on your back if you aren't already and take your palms on the mat and put them under your sacrum so that the palms will be facing the mat. Yep, just kind of tuck them under your bum. 
and beautiful. And then start to press into the palms and the forearms, sending the chest up toward the sky and come onto the top of the head. Good, bringing the elbows closer together if you can. Beautiful, it's just creating space in the neck and shoulders, relaxing the shoulders. There we go, beautiful. Letting the head come down. If you'd like, you can put a blanket. Would you like the blanket? Sure. Head. Okay. Good. A nice counter pose after what we just worked on. And just breathe here. You could also put a three minute egg under the back for extra support. Or you could come into any other back bend that you enjoy. Bridge pose. <sighs> Let's take one more deep breath in and out together. Good. Breathe in. We're going to remove the blanket. And then come out the same way you came in, nice and slowly. Watch your hair. <laughs> remove your hands from under your hips. And then shake out all the wiggle jiggles. How you feeling? Nice. Balanced? Yeah, felt good. Awesome. <laughs> it's time for Sheer Shasana, also known as Headstands. Headstand is super duper fun. For me, it was really intimidating and scary for a long time, but once it was broken down for me and bit by bit, step by step pieces, it becomes so much more accessible and just, you know, build up to where you're at now and then add on little by little. So without further ado, <laughs> we're gonna start in Virasana, Hero's Pose, so your hips on your heels. And then Whoop Whoop is going to walk her hands out in front of her and bring the hands to the elbows onto the mat so that we can see about what distance our elbows should be apart, like a little genie. She skipped the step. <laughs> and oh. then, yeah, boop, 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 boop. So then we know how wide the elbows should be. And then you can bring the hands together to clasp. Beautiful, creating a little triangle. Then she can bring the crown of her head toward the mat. Look at this beautiful hair. But what you're gonna do is really put the weight into the forearms, right? Not the head, okay? She's gonna create space in the neck and the shoulders and then tuck the toes under and come into a modified dolphin. Sending the hips toward the sky. Good, pressing through the chest. Just coming into dolphin for now and engage your mula bandha, which is like the pelvic floor as if you're holding in the need to go number one to the bathroom. Um, so all these pelvic muscles all the way to the glutes, and then you're gonna engage Uddiyana Bandha, which means drawing the belly button toward the spine, and at the same time, lengthening the spine. Yes, nice adjustment, beautiful. And, Breathing, ujjayi breath, good, opening the back. And then when you feel complete, bringing the knees back down and coming into a child's pose. How are you feeling? Good. Like a dolphin. Like a dolphin. <laughs> Beautiful, take a few breaths here. I wish I could make a dolphin noise. <laughs> Let's try, let's all make a dolphin noise. <laughs> I love that, getting really into the spirit of the pose. And when you feel complete, we're going to come back into our dolphin pose the same way we just did. So creating our beautiful hands to elbows, clasping the hands, bringing the head towards the earth, tucking the toes, good, keeping this nice length in Nice length in the spine, lifting the heels, the hips, pressing the heels, lifting the hips. Good. And then feel this lengthening in the back. Beautiful. Good. Now what she's going to do is on her tippy toes, start to walk her feet closer to her elbows and just practice feeling this lengthening of the spine. You can come closer if you can. 
Beautiful. And then walking back to where you started. And then bringing the knees to the earth, coming out of the pose for a few breaths. You can come to Virasana Hero's Pose or back into Child's Pose. How are we doing? <laughs> I'm good. Still can't open it up. <laughs> Beautiful. Let's do it again. <sighs> Amazing. Crossing the hands, bring the head toward the earth. Beautiful lengthening the spine here. Then you tuck the toes and send the hips toward the sky. Good. Pressing really into the forearms to create space. Beautiful adjustment. Walking the toes towards the base that you've created with your elbows and your forearms. Engaging Mula Bandha, engaging Uddiyana Bandha. Getting as close as you can. And then we're gonna bring one knee to the chest and then the next coming into our headstand. Good, beautiful. And just playing with finding that balance. Good. And it really is a, a balancing game here, finding that sweet spot. Um, what you can practice doing too is letting yourself fall uh, toward the other side. So I'm going to ask Whoop Whoop to purposefully fall, boop, 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 and then come on out of it. And that's a really, you can come out. <laughs> Feels nice. You feel good. <laughs> She's like, I could just stay here. Stay here. <laughs> so um, it's actually a really fun thing to do to practice falling and know that you're going to be caught by the floor um, mm -hmm. when we're practicing headstand out in space. Um, and so once you overcome that, mm -hmm. you're like, okay, I can do this. I can find my sweet spot. Yeah. So if you haven't already, I invite you to practice that fall. And then once you're ready, we'll come back. We're working our way up here. You're doing mm -hmm. amazing. Building blocks. Yes. Beautiful. Bring the hands together. Coming into a modified dolphin. Yes, creating space in the upper back and then walking the toes toward. Yep, even more if you can. I think you can do it. I know you can. Creating length, creating space here. One knee to the chest at a time. Beautiful. Coming up. And if you have someone to assist to spot you, that's great. You can even have them help lift up to create that nice lengthening. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I'm gonna bring you back up. She could have fallen. We practiced that. I got that. too lazy. Okay. Yep. So every muscle is engaged here. How you doing? Good. Okay. So Mula Bandha, Uddiyana Bandha, even sparking the toes. Beautiful. Keep breathing. Nice space. Yes. I didn't even have to touch you. You just felt that energy of creating space. And you can stay here as long as you would like. She's engaging her glutes, her core is engaged. And then <laughs> when you're ready, <laughs> you can bring one knee or both knees into the chest and come out the same way you came in. And we can come into a child's pose for rest if you'd like. Let's take some deep breaths here. You're doing amazing wherever you're at. I applaud you for your willingness to try and enjoy uh, headstand shirshasana. I really think it's amazing um, the amount of courage it takes to go into this kind of posture, especially away from the wall. Um, how did it feel to flip over? I feel like there's like a moment of like, ooh, where's the floor? But then once you do it, then you're good. Yeah. <laughs> you know it's there. You know it's there for you. Yeah. And what do you love about headstand? <sighs> I don't know. It just feels magical. I love inversions. <laughs> ooh, I feel like I'm kind of floating. I feel very activated and strong. It feels, again, you have to stay super present. So it's nice when we have these activities that really you have to stay present otherwise you'll just flop over so it's a nice practice just to be in the moment and activate everything yeah i love, I love it. 
Absolutely. And I think being really conscious of building the posture from the ground up because, you know, we might take for granted, especially adults or people who have been living for a while when we were learning to walk, there was a lot of trial and error there and, and balancing on our feet that now we're like, oh, I can make those micro adjustments. It's super easy, but building our base, pressing into the floor and then sending the energy upward, it takes practice and, and mm -hmm. it, it'll feel better and better over time. Yeah. Let's do it one more time. Shirshasana headstand. So coming into our modified dolphin to start. Because the more we practice, the easier it will become and the more we receive the benefits. Beautiful, tucking the toes, creating space here, setting the hips toward the sky. Here we're engaging everything, Mula Bandha, Uddiyana Bandha, walking the toes toward the elbows. Good, she's creating space in the neck. Good, as close as she can, beautiful. Then bringing the knees to the chest and then extending the legs up toward the sky. Good, imagining this energy coming up, sparking the toes, every muscle is engaged and we're breathing. Ujjayi breath, as long as you'd like to stay here. Remember, if you fall out, that's okay. Pressing into the forearms. Beautiful, coming out when you're ready. Beautiful, whoop, whoop, nice and controlled. And we did it! <laughs> Ta-da, Shirshasana! <laughs> So let us know your experience with Shir Shasana. Have you done it before? Is this your first time? What do you love about it? Would you like to practice more? Let us know all about your experience doing headstand. I look forward to hearing about it. Yay! Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> We're ready to move from headstand to handstand. Auto Mukha Virksasana, downward facing tree. Mm. How cool is that? So before we get into our handstand, I want you to just come into a standing position, okay? And bring your awareness into how your feet feel. Notice how you're distributing your weight in your feet and consciously work towards evenly distributing your weight on the three corners of the feet right? The inner ball mount, the outer ball mount, and the heel. Lift the toes, spark the toes, and then bring them down to the earth. And really feel the whole foot pressing into the earth. How do you feel? Solid. Solid, sturdy, right? And, mm -hmm. and we're doing this without even thinking about it, probably, because we've been practicing standing and walking around for years. So I want you to think about the same thing when we come to focus on our hand placement because our hands are going to become our feet in our handstand. Adho Mukha Vriksasana. Okay, so to start, we're going to come in Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Good. So really think about what we just talked about. Press the palms into the earth, spread the fingers wide, press them evenly into the earth. Good. From here, you're gonna lift one leg straight up. Good, I'm gonna keep the hips square and do your best to kick this straight leg up and take the other foot and kick your heel. So keeping that leg up, yep, and then Come up, boop, exactly. Doing your best to keep this leg straight. Mm -hmm. Good. And be a little bold. See if you can go a little bit further than you think you can, because I'm spotting you. 
good. Amazing. And see how she's playing around with each side. Make sure you do both feet and notice how they feel similar or different. Yep, take a break if you want. <laughs> how are you feeling so far? Good. Yeah. Do you notice one side feels a certain way versus the other? Yeah, I feel like my bring my right foot up first is easier than my left foot. Okay. It's more comfortable. Gotcha. Also, it's easier, but it's more comfy. Yeah. So just noticing that, and then we're going to continue to work on both sides. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I want you to play around with is your drishti, your focal point, where you're looking. So some people find that looking at their hands down in front of them is more effective for them, while others find that looking back, creating a nice straight alignment in the spine is more effective. So let's come back into downward facing dog once you shake it all out and feel ready to go back. Beautiful. So it looks like she's looking back. We'll try that out. So kicking up, practicing our prep. Mm -hmm. Doing our best to keep this leg straight. Mm -hmm. Nice, you got a little further. Yes, see the difference, amazing. Yes, and now try looking toward the hands and see how that feels. Coming into downward facing dog. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And then maybe the other side, the other foot. No. No. <laughs> One more. Nice. And then relax, coming out of it. Shake it, Ooh. shake it. So what did you notice about changing your gaze? <sighs> it's more comfortable, I think, looking back a little bit than looking at my hands. But it wasn't terribly different, to be honest. Okay. I know it's a bigger difference of my side. <laughs> and that's really common. So just noticing where you're at and playing around with that. Again, like this is fun. This is playful. Have fun with it. Um, some people might find that kicking the heel toward the hips is easier. I find for me that I like doing it with both legs straight, so kind of coming into an L. Let's try that with loop loop and see how we feel. So coming back into Adho Mukha Spinasana, downward facing dog, lifting up one leg straight, and then kicking both legs up straight doing our best to work towards the handstand. It's harder for me to it's like harder. start off the ground. Mm. Yeah. Probably just because of momentum. Mm -hmm. You're doing great. Other side. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do your favorite side. Okay. And your favorite gaze. Okay. And you're going to do it. Okay. You're going to make it, and I'm going to catch you, okay. and I'm going to help you feel that length. Perfect. All right. And if you have someone available to help you, have fun with this. Okay? Here we go. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! All right. Good breathing. Good stacking, good lengthening. Yes, engaging all the muscles of the body. Good. Coming down. <laughs> Adho Mukha Virsasana. How did you feel? Good. Yeah. Feel strong. Good. I feel like I need to practice more. <laughs> and that's why we practice. Yes. So, what do you prefer? Headstand, handstand? I mean, I prefer headstand if I want to hold it, <laughs> or like at the end of a practice, I feel like a headstand is nice just to like, I don't know, it just feels like it grounds me a little bit, or almost like completes it. Mm -hmm. But handstands for me are more like, let's play, inversions, like, I don't know, headstands feels more grounding, and handstands feel more playful. Or like uplifting. Yeah. In a sense too. Yeah, a little more high energy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like that opposite energy is true for both. 
headstand and handstand, yeah. handstand right? We're really grounding, pressing into the earth with our hands or our forearms and then feeling that energy like lifting us up and, and engaging every yeah. muscle. These are super invigorating poses for sure. <laughs> um, and actually we mentioned something really um, helpful as well that inversions are typically utilized at the end of our practice, right? So if you've taken a yoga flow class, you might find you do shoulder stand or waterfall or mm -hmm. hands, headstand at the end of practice to kind of bring it full circle. Yeah, but handstands I feel like are good just on their own fun. Because <laughs> handstands at the end of the practice can be a little, your arms might not be as fresh <laughs> as they once were. <laughs> So what do you think? Do you prefer headstand or handstand? Let us know in the comments. Now we're going to do Vrkshakasana scorpion pose. Woohoo! So you can do scorpion pose with your hands or your forearms. Today we're going to be practicing it with our forearms. So to start, let's get into our dolphin pose. <laughs> Careful of your props. And whoop, whoop, move your body backwards. Just leave enough room to flip over. Good. So she has her elbows, um, genie arms width apart. Good, coming back there. And she's gonna practice kicking up and practicing flipping over. It's a good idea to get this out of the way <laughs> so that we are trusting and confident in that as we find that sweet spot. So when you're ready, just come up and kick up over. Yep, that's okay. A little bit further than you think. And flip. We did it! And then rolling up to your side. That wasn't so bad, was it? No. No. So I encourage you to flip over, get it out of the way because it, it'll it happen. <laughs> and it's okay. It's okay. So let's come back into our dolphin. Okay. I was thinking about something. <laughs> Mm hmm. And that genie arms, pressing into the palms, spreading the fingers wide, having that nice space. Beautiful. And then kicking up. And what's going to happen is she's going to extend her head looking up and bring the toes toward the head into a nice back bend. Yep. <clears throat> yep, yep, yep. Oh, let's try one more time. Yep, looking up. Beautiful, yes, 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 yes. And then when you're ready, you can come out and relax. So feel free to pause this video, practice as long as you would like to. Keep breathing, playing with it, having fun. That is our scorpion pose. Yay. Yay. How do you feel? Good, yeah. I know that's not my, back bends are not my. My most bendy is the official term. And um, yeah, no, it felt good though. It felt good to practice first falling. So you feel like, okay, I know what's going to happen if I go too far, and then it helps you with your balance. So yeah, it's good. Yeah. I feel good. <laughs> and like we talked about, you know, these inversions that we're going over, they, you know, are something we can work towards, right? We can work on these preparatory poses that we talked about. We could just do legs up the wall mm -hmm. and, you know, over time, practice, 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 and it'll become more fun. It'll become easier and we'll keep getting the benefits of these inversions. So what has been your favorite inversion of this workshop? Still headstands. Still yep. headstands. Although handstands are fun too. But heads, I'll, headstands. <laughs> I'm better at them, I guess, which doesn't matter because it's a yoga practice, but I feel like I can hold it solidly and my handstand is not there yet, but it's still very fun to play with. I am also very indecisive, but I'll still go with handstand. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay to, you know, have a preference and enjoy something a lot and take advantage of that and, and also to work for and strive for improving in other areas too. I mean, my favorite inversion is legs up the wall. I love that I can just relax into it and still get the benefits of being right. inverted. So let us know in the comments below what your favorite inversion was today or maybe something that you learned that you didn't know before. I'd love to receive that feedback. Post a link in the comments to a video of you doing your favorite inversion yes. and we can share the 
upside down love of yoga. Yay! Now that we've practiced all these amazing inversion asanas, let us come into our final relaxation. So you could choose to come into Shavasana corpse pose, or you can come into a restorative fish pose. So you could take some pillows or a blanket and roll it up like this. And then I'm gonna have Wubu put her uh, hips against the blanket and then lie back. And you can have your arms to the side or you can reach them up overhead. You can have them grab opposite elbows. How do you feel? <sighs> you put me to work, girl. <laughs> Feels good. <laughs> good. Come up for a second. I'm going to have Whoop Whoop use the bolster. This is my favorite way yes, to <laughs> experience restorative fish. Good. What kind of fish am I having? What kind of fish? Can I be a puffer fish? Absolutely. Puffer fish are so cute. <laughs> Embrace your favorite <laughs> fish. And she can extend her legs out in front. She can bring them into butterfly by putting the, the bottoms of the feet together, opening the knees out to the side. You could take some blocks for support for the knees as well. Yep. Or she can take her feet to the earth, walk them out wider than the hips, and then let the knees come toward each other in constructive rest pose. So really just coming back to our ujjayi breath. Noticing how you feel in your body now versus when you started. I'm actually going to put the three minute eggs under her legs for support. How's Vegan that? eggs. Vegan eggs. <laughs> All you need to do is breathe, just breathe in and out. Notice how you're feeling in your body now versus when we started. Maybe starting to express some gratitude to yourself for showing up today, for taking this workshop, for giving your body the opportunity to go upside down and receive all the benefits from the practice. Expressing loving kindness to every cell in your body, every organ. It's your fabulous teacher. Thank you, Lexi. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take another deep breath in and out. And you can continue breathing here. You can stay here as long as you'd like. You can pause the video and enjoy your final relaxation. If you're still with us, you can begin to bring your awareness back to the space, wiggle the fingers, wiggle the toes, maybe do some nice wrist circles, ankle circles, start to wake up the extremities, maybe a full body stretch. E -e -e, whoop, whoop, whoop. Coming onto one side of the body, taking a deep breath there. Take your time, just breathe. <laughs> and when you're ready, you can press yourself up to seat it. Yay! Yay! Thank you so much for choosing me to be your guide in this going upside down for weight loss and wellness inversion workshop. Thank you, Whoop Whoop, for being our beautiful, gorgeous model demonstrator and for joining us on this journey. Thank you. For watching thank you for choosing to take this time for yourself if you're interested in more yoga practice recipes tips for creating wellness or for releasing weight definitely subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for some more goodies i appreciate you i love you may you be happy and free and safe and live with ease of well-being and namaste Day. Have a great day. Bye. <laughs>